Hey guys, it's Kevin. At our repair shop, we have to use a microscope daily, and we have so many microscopes. And basically, they're like pencils. And today, we're going to work on this uh, Link Micro Microscope, and I'll be going to show you how it works and do a brief review. Hey guys, it's Abby here. I'm unboxing and putting together Link Micro's LM249MS digital microscope. It is their 10 inch HDMI microscope. It comes with three lenses and this one has been upgraded with their 13 inch boom arm metal stand. So I'm unboxing everything and it comes with a pair of tweezers and a few science slides that you can look at and we'll look at them with the third lens this box comes with. So here is a USB cable included in the box and we also are included with a power supply to power on the microscope a SD card to record anything that we look at under the microscope and it is labeled spare parts on this baggie for a few screws that would be used in putting together the microscope we are also included with a clear bug viewing case so if you were to catch any bugs and wanted to do a bit of experimenting or looking at them you could put them in there we're also given this really cool light box to view and i'll show you how to use that later in the video we'll use that with the third lens as well. and let's see what else we're giving here are our other two lenses they're put in two plastic bags in a protective white plastic case so they don't get scratched and in the back here we are given an hdmi cable that we can plug into the microscope and back there as well we are given our dimmer cables so we can brighten up the microscope dim it down and that's the power on button so it comes with three cables connected to that dimmer and that's everything on that first level and we'll go ahead and keep unboxing okay so we have this long metal rod and we have a loose lock on it we'll take that out and then we will go ahead and take out this part here which we were going to go ahead and call that the boom arm we're going to go ahead and call it that's what's going to hold your microscope over the base and here is the base with the two gooseneck lights and you can see that they have the base wrapped up in a bit of soft styrofoam so it doesn't get scratched okie dokie so we'll go ahead and slide off this soft styrofoam and then we'll use that long rod you'll see there's a screwed part down at the bottom and that's the part where we want to screw it into the base so just go ahead and screw that and you'll see that there's that loose lock that I called it, that loose circle up top. So that part I'm not worrying about right now, but that is the part that is going to stop how far your microscope can go down if you were to lower it by the knobs or to loosen it and lower it down. Here's that boom arm. I'm putting that over top and you see that's as far as it can go down it will stop at that lower lock ring around so here I'm tightening those screws on top of that boom arm but you also see it's facing the wrong way over not over the base so I loosened it again and I'm just twisting it around so now it's hovering over the base where the microscope would sit down into it so it would be looking directly over whatever is sitting down on that large base here is the microscope uh, with the microscope host and everything and you'll see that the microscope itself is actually positioned facing upwards so you need to carefully bend it down so it would be looking down at the black base whatever you would have sitting down there it would be able to pick that up and so i'm just showing you here we have lens a already on you cannot lower it down into the boom arm with those screws on or with a microscope already in there what we need to do is we need to unscrew the screws to the lens don't lose these screws okay so this is important be careful with them set them down somewhere you can see them because you'll use them again in just a second so we're loosening those screws 
and once we loosen them we will take off lens a by just pulling it off it's really it comes off really easy but don't drop the lens be very careful with it that you don't scratch it all right and so i'm just going to get a tool here to show you uh, what notch we're looking to line up where so we'll get a zoomed in um video here of this small notch right at the base um, of the microscope and with its zoom in lens area so there's a small notch there at the top and that notch is actually going to line up with this circular part on the boom arm that's going to hold it so you see here there's this same notch towards the front so we know that notch that was on the microscope is going to have to line up with that meaning that microscope needs to be facing front which is pretty obvious because we want to be able to see the screen right okay so you'll see i tried to lower it in there but there's two screws that are on the outside of this ring on the boom arm and i need to loosen those because um the screws are sticking too far in for me to lower the microscope down if you want you can take those screws all the way out and hold them if you want you can just do what i did loosen them as far enough that the microscope can slide down in there you won't really hear it click but you can feel it click and you see a little bit of the silver from the ring and once it goes completely down it's gone remember to put those two screws back into the microscope area around that ring when you screw them in you don't want to screw too hard that you're going to puncture any of the microscope it's just enough to tighten it and keep it in place from wobbling around or wiggling when you're working with the microscope okay awesome it doesn't have the lens on right now if you remember we took lens a off but we're going to put lens a back on lens a is good for looking at your typical items like coins it can be good for looking at rocks just a lot of general observations that you need to make remember we're putting lens a back on you'll see on the lens that there's two golden circles on either side that's where the screws would go in so you'll when you put it back into the zoomed lens part where that would go you'll see that they will line up and you can put your screws in and uh you'll screw them and again you don't need to make it extremely tight or whatever you don't want to break anything um it's just enough to hold it in place but with those screws i don't think you really can puncture um the lens or anything the way you could possibly puncture with those top screws all right now we're going to put on some clips this microscope comes with two sets of clips that you can attach to the base this kit does not come with a screwdriver so make sure you find a screwdriver to help screw these down in place it comes with a clip a longer screw and then a spring and so it basically goes clip on clip in the middle spring on the bottom and the screw on the top going down once we get that we can line it up with the hole on the base and use your screwdriver to screw it down you'll see that i give it a little test just because i want to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose because if i ever want to put something under there i want to make sure that it holds here's the other spring so again clip with the screw down on top and the spring under the screw and go ahead and line it up with the other hole and use your screwdriver again once you have both clips in you can test them out by putting a piece of paper in there putting maybe a main board or anything but um, we'll use the main board for the second lens the second lens lens l is better for welding but see i used that paper just to test here we go we have our dimmer cables so this is the one that has the power on button and it has a brighter and a dimmer button so this one has three cables with it the top cable i'll go ahead and show you that will be the light basically and that goes at the base at the back of the digital microscope it attaches to the base and it's a very small um, little port or opening basically you barely even see it you might have to tip up the microscope base just a little bit to actually even plug it in but that's where that first cable goes you see I had to tip it up a bit but that's where that first cable goes so then our middle cable well, let's see we'll separate them and we'll pull out our middle cable 
and this is our second cable this second cable is going to lead to the back of the microscope the microscope screen actually is where it's going to get plugged into at the top so we'll go ahead and bend that down you'll see that there's a spot for an sd card um, and next to that is where that second um, cable is going to plug into so we have our first cable and our second cable plugged in that just leaves us with our third cable and that is the cable that will plug in to the power the little power box and that power box came with the microscope box we'll plug that in and then we will find a power outlet to go ahead and plug it into if you plug it in and it starts up on its own for the first time that is normal and nothing to be alarmed about so we'll go ahead and plug that in usually the first thing to power on is those gooseneck lights and then you'll see that blue welcome screen so i'm just arranging my lights so we can see them and i just want to find an object to put under there you'll see my little tiny hand screwdriver i'm going to try to focus it in here so we can get a clear picture and what i'm doing is i'm going to go ahead and i'm lowered my microscope just a tad bit and i'm using this focus button but we can see that even from up there we have a pretty good view on this 10 inch screen and I'm using the gooseneck lights to go ahead and angle the light on there in a nice way. So we are viewing this on Link Micro's 10 inch HDMI microscope and we're viewing it with their upgraded 13 inch boom arm metal stand. We're viewing it through their lens A, which you'll have to remember is for more general objects. And here is the SD card that also comes with their box. So I hadn't plugged it in yet, but if you turn around the back, you'll see there's next to that middle cable. We'll plug the SD card in. It powered off for me when I did that, so I'm powering it back on. Now I just decided we're still on lens A, but I just decided to put something else under there. Here's a rock that I had found. It has a small piece of pyrite on it, if you see that goldish cube towards the bottom of that gray and white stone but I'm moving around with the gooseneck lights just to play with position of lighting and going in with their zoom focus scroll above the lens you can see how it would be to look at other regular objects that you might just be looking at to see say I wanted to see if I found any more pyrite on this rock that I had collected so that's more what lens A is going to be able to do for you, and I think that's really cool. Now we're going to move on to our second lens, which is lens L. Lens L is going to be more for welding or working on circuit boards, working with watches, trying to repair something that's really small, really detailed, and so that's what we're going to use it, and that's something that maybe we would use here at our work is for repairing main boards or repairing print heads or something. To change out your lens, remember, we need to undo the two screws to the lens. Don't lose those screws, it's important, and then just slide down on your lens, so we took out lens A. Here, I'm being really nice and gentle with my lenses. I'm just basically swapping out lens A for lens L, putting it in the plastic bag and the plastic box it came in. And then I'm putting lens L back where lens A was originally. And then I'll go ahead and put in the two screws to hold in lens L. And we'll go ahead and power it on and see what lens L looks like. And I'll show you that. I will have to say that lens L was probably my favorite and the one that I was most in shock by or just taken aback by at how good of a picture it can get and good quality it can get of the main boards. Yeah, I don't know if you just see this. I think it's really crazy cool. So originally I was looking here for the F1 fuse on the main board to try to show you. So there it is. I found the F301 fuse on this ST2000 main board that say I would repair. So I found it and here I am just using the gooseneck lights again to get better lighting that I might want. And you see it's like clear but it's still a little out of focus. Now look how clear that picture is. Really cool. <laughs> just really cool. And to me too the thing that was so cool about it is just that the lens was not super close to the main board just that there's so much space in between there 
but yeah so here I'm actually lowering the physical microscope down towards the main board and as you see it gets blurry but then I use that focusing to focus on the main board here I'm moving it around and you can see there's just very clear this would be like a cable connection like a wire connection here would be an ffc connection to me i thought that was crazy cool that if you needed to check to see if any of these um have been burned or if ink has gotten into them you could see specifically which part is messed up in that ffc connection or um if we wanted to look somewhere else i just thought that was really cool here i was using that dimmer cable if i didn't want to move my gooseneck lights i could dim it or brighten it just by one button or two here was where i thought was also cool that say this would maybe be for a power cable or something if my power cable wasn't working but maybe the power box was i could see oh okay maybe one of these little prongs in here was bent down or broken off and that could explain to me why the power box is working but maybe not the main board like you can just see really up close how cool that is and i'm going to work with the remote here a little bit that button i just inversed it maybe not for that specific cause but if i wanted to work more on a circuit board you could inverse it just to see so there's that f301 that i work with a lot and i have it recording right now so you can see up in that top corner we have that red blinking light and it's counting up the numbers i have it recording it also has the film recorder icon so that's how you know if you're ever filming anything right here i press the button to take that inverse off so we have it just back to the regular main board let's see what button have i pushed now okay so i froze the picture and i took that main board out so this other button will unfreeze it so that's that freeze button and unfreeze so i took the main board out and i froze it and then i unfroze it you can saw the main board wasn't under there so if you need to show somebody a picture and freeze it you can always freeze something uh, here again i just wanted to show the quality of the picture so here's a little bit of writing on the main board and how small that would be to human eyes just trying to read i don't know i'm farsighted i'm not the best at nearsightedness either but and you can just see that the lighting as well makes it even better there i took a picture of it so say i needed to take a picture to remember this number in the writing you can see there i have it in the corner i have it in photo mode so i was able to take a photo and here i'm just zooming in to say oh maybe i had really bad eyes even with this amazing zoom let me zoom in just a tiny bit more to see what that last letter said right or if maybe a letter got rubbed off somehow you could zoom in just to see and read it a bit better that's darkening the contrast i believe brightening darkening and brightening if you need to see something a bit better that way and they also have an option on there for a cross red cross or red x to mark something on there and that's that x button that is on the right side under the circle when you press mode it brings up a lot of different options for you and you can go ahead and explore those that's how you'll find a delete area for any photos or videos you might take in right here i'm looking at a previous photo the way you can tell is you'll see a, a girl in a picture um and there that's video that's a video icon showing that i'm in a video mode here's a picture showing that i'm in picture mode i can take a picture the way to know what you already have seen that's a girl in a picture so that's a picture i had taken if you wanted to see a video you had taken you would see a video film strip so, okay so i think that's a bit of viewing lens l and how we would use it here so i'm going to go ahead and switch it out to our last lens which is lens d and that is used for more of a biology slice in biology slides something you might use in science class or uh, if you're just wanting to have a fun science sunday with your family all right so again just being very careful and they don't give you three bags or room for three lenses in the box so i'm assuming that link micro assumes that you'll always have one microscope 
lens on the microscope at all times so whatever one you take off I would just put back in the zip and the little clear bag and then put it into that clear box that they give you all right so now we're going to use that light box that they gave us for lens D as well so if you notice I took that first dimmer cable out which was for the light and I'm going to get my light box now if you look on the back you'll see that same round small input for that cable that's what lights up the box and then you press the power button on the dimmer cable that's going to power on the light and the light box and our screen on our monitor for the digital microscope so it comes with slides already if you don't have any you can always learn how to make your own or maybe ask a teacher if they have any slides you could borrow and bring back i'm sure your teacher would love that maybe even give you extra credit all right so i took that screw off of the larger boom arm because that's what's going to help lower it down and if you can't lower it down any further look at that lower lock ring on the actual silver rod or that one that we screwed down into the base originally because that's what's going to keep that arm from or that boom arm from lowering that lock ring and when you have it in place where you want it go ahead and screw it back in so when we work with lens d that's where we're going to have to lower the microscope the lowest it goes as long as it's not scratching or touching the actual slide itself or the light box we don't want to scratch the lens but so here we can see the gooseneck lights don't work when we have it on the light box working with lens d so we have to rely on the light box which is why we also have to bring that microscope lens d so close down um, to the slide so here is a pine cone slide and it's dyed so you can see the different parts of it so i'll go ahead and zoom in once i got it focused and i'll probably start taking a bunch of pictures where you'll see here i've videoed when it comes to the science slides i like to put them into black and white or inverse them and i think it's fun to just investigate when it comes to the science slides link micro does such a great job with this microscope giving you a 10 inch screen to view everything and their upgraded 13 inch boom arm stand does a great job to be able to lower and raise the actual microscope itself and the three different lenses are awesome to switch in and out to view different things from repairs to just observations and researching science. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can visit us at bchtechnologies.com or you can visit us locally in Greensboro, North Carolina. Happy printing, everyone.